Awesome. Yep. I see you recording. Do you want me to keep All Facebook right. up just in case it pops up on Facebook? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've got it on that screen too. So for everyone joining us, this is our first Zoom slash live Facebook. So we're trying to figure it out and hope that it works. If not, we're Yay. recording it. So welcome to our session. Yay. Um, I'm going to let Shalena take over. So I'm, I'm Aubrey Houck. I'm a lender here in Dallas. And Shalena is a realtor in Plano. So I'll let her take over and then we'll go from there. Awesome. Awesome. Hi guys. This is Shalina with Keller Williams Plano, your local realtor. And we just wanted to come together today to share with you. And I'm going to share my screen so you can see why we're even here today. We are here to share with you what home ownership looks like during a pandemic. Now I know that businesses are about to open back up and everybody's about to get back into the full swing, but Aubrey and I never stopped. She's been getting mortgages out and I've been helping buyers get into homes and sellers sell their homes quickly. And so what you see in front of you right now is one of those homes that we're selling. This is 1543 Tavistock. And the great thing about this house, it's a uh, four bedroom, three and a half bath, 27, over 2,700 square feet, and it's only 315. And so you'll see some amazing features of this home. And what Aubrey and I are gonna do today is we're gonna walk you through what a loan would look like for this home. And I know sometimes when I'm talking to renters, their big fear is, well, I can't afford to purchase a home. Well, you can't afford not to. Now is a phenomenal time to get into a home. And so we are gonna talk to you through those numbers and just a couple of things that I wanted to point out before Aubrey hits you with the numbers is this home is um, located in uh, Forney, Texas. And if you love the address, uh, reach out to myself or Aubrey and we can schedule personal tours for you. Yes, we are scheduling personal tours for people. And what that looks like is we are going into the homes and we are bringing our phones and we're doing virtual tours so that you don't have to leave the house. And if you want to leave the house, we take safety measures. So I go in and I open things up for you and I'm wearing my mask and my gloves to be safe. But we want to make sure that home ownership becomes a reality and not just something that we continue to watch our landlords reap the benefits of. And so we're here to share that with you today. And so as you can see, the photo is going through in this home. It's got beautiful hardwood flooring, amazing kitchen, um, does have four huge bedrooms. Um, the master bedroom is, is pretty large. And um, the other room that the other location I wanted to show you was this backyard. This is a massive backyard. Wow. And so we're going to link the um, website for this property below in, um, or if you would like a link to this website, please reach out to Aubrey or myself and we will get that for you. And so now um, what I would love for Aubrey to do is if Aubrey, what would it look like to own a home like this in, um, in, in today's world with the interest rates where they are, with things looking the way that they're looking? What would it look like for someone to own this type of home? And I'm going to um, pass this over to Aubrey so that she can share with you what that mortgage would look like. Absolutely. So number one, beautiful house. That's Thank you. For the updates in the property, 315, I mean, that's a cheap house for what you yes. have going on. I love all the bright white, the dark countertops. Mm -hmm. It's my style. Love it. Yeah. So good here's pricing a, you know, there. The best part about that is if someone comes in and they don't like it, they can change it and not get in trouble by a landlord because they own it. <laughs> exactly. 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 So now you should be seeing my screen with numbers. Do you see that? Yes, ma'am. All right, awesome. So we do have two properties we're gonna talk about. Let's first go to Tavistock, which is the property that we just looked at photos of. Mm -hmm. So what you wanna notice and pay attention to is these numbers right over here. So we're looking at this right here. You've got the purchase price. I'm gonna unhighlight these. So you've got your purchase price of 315. And mm -hmm. what I did is I built out two different loan options. So everybody wants to know, first time home buyer, do I qualify? What does it even mean? Mm -hmm. The benefit of the first time home buyer is number one, you could put as little as 3% down. So for out of pocket costs, it's a lot cheaper. Yeah. Um, so I am showing on that left hand side, your first time home buyer. And I did want to compare that to another loan type FHA. They're both very good loans. It really just comes down to where is your credit score? What's your debt versus income? We dive into that stuff before you're house shopping so you actually know the numbers and you feel good about it before you're looking at houses. 
Mm. So as we know right now, rates are phenomenal. So you're looking at a rate of about 3.25, whether you go first time wow. home buyer or FHA. Um, obviously, we ran credit scores at about a 720 on both of those. So good rates, even still with clients that I've pulled credit on, that's a 640. I still lock someone in that was a 640 with a really low 3% rate. So rates are helping you save money on your payment. That's the most important part. We're going to go through the payment breakdown and the total due at closing real quick. So what you want to pay attention to is number one, principal and interest. That comes from how much are you borrowing and what is your interest rate. So right off the bat, you're looking at between $1,330 and $1,350 a month. Most people pay more than that in apartment rent. That's your principal and interest. We also pulled taxes on this property. So taxes are still really low. We're including that in your payments. We also include um, homeowner's insurance, which we average about $120 a month here in this area. The one thing we all hate, if you're putting less than 20% down, you pay mortgage insurance. It is what it is. It protects you. It protects us. Eventually, it does go away. So when you add everything together, on a first-time home buyer loan, you're looking at a total payment of about $2,400 a month with everything included. That's phenomenal. If you move over to FHA, the only reason that one's a little bit higher is because the mortgage insurance can be a little more expensive or cheaper depending on your credit score. Keep in mind that property does have HOA dues. They're about 47 bucks a month. You're definitely getting value out of that with your HOA. So if you look at total outgo, you're between $2,450 and $2,500 a month for that beautiful home at $315. That's a great deal. That's amazing. And so Aubrey, someone looking at this says, oh my gosh, I'm only paying $1,800 right now in rent. There's no way I can afford that type of monthly payment. What are some things, some tips and tricks that you usually tell your borrowers in terms of what can I do to cut costs and be able to own the home at that price versus continuing to rent? Because one thing I wanted to remind everyone about is $2,400, $2,500 this is an investment. So you're making an investment into yourself and into your home that you will reap the benefits off of. And so Aubrey, what are some of the, the tips or tricks or if you have someone who wants to raise their credit score, what are some ideas that you give them? That's a great question. So number one, um, I'm a big, even though I'm a not a financial advisor, we basically become financial advisors. I look at what is your total outgo. So the first thing I do is I pull credit mm. to see where your scores are. Yeah. And I'm going to see, okay, is there something I can advise you to do to increase scores while you're house shopping? Because we are not taught about credit. Kids are still not taught about credit in school today. Mm. And you can easily swing credit points with a credit card up or down. So I look at what's on your credit. How are you managing your finances? But also, is there a way that we can move things around to save money? Let's say maybe you had a car that you originally purchased for $50,000, you now owe 10,000, but you're still paying that $700 a month car payment. Why not refinance the car into a lower payment? Maybe mm -hmm. your payment's 200 bucks if you refi it. Well, that right there just covered your $500 that you're uncomfortable with on the house payment. So it's looking at the big picture of your finances. How are you managing money? What can we help you do to save money? where the money that you are putting in is going to this house payment. But also think about it this way. If you're paying someone else's rent, you're not getting that tax right off at the end of the year. Yeah. And another good example, I've been in the business 15 years and I was afraid to buy a house because I was afraid of the commitment. If something broke, mm -hmm. what do I do? Well, that's why we have home warranties. I wanted someone to change my light bulb. Well, I have a kid for that. So we get to <laughs> my light bulb now. But most importantly, what I learned through buying my first house, I just bought four years ago, believe it or not, and my house gained $100,000 in equity with me paying an extra $100 a month on a house payment. That is mm. huge. There's nowhere that you can go and just walk into a six-figure saving. Wow. So real estate, it's very important. And, you know, in the end, I'd rather pay my own mortgage and pay for my future investment and know that I could always sell this house. I could turn it into a rental if I needed to. And in the end, it's a good, you know, it's a good investment. So. And I'm so glad you mentioned that because the difference between an $1,800 mortgage and the um, mortgage on the first time home buyer, the 2456, 
is a is six hundred and fifty six dollars. How much of us can find six hundred and fifty six dollars to save every month? Absolutely. Absolutely. Could that be yeah. going out to eat less? Um, could that yeah. be cutting back on some of the expenses? And here's the, here's a trick. I know people who will go on vacation, take these lavish vacations, and they're a renter. Well, there's nothing wrong with going on vacation, but that vacation netted you zero in an investment. Mm -hmm. How about you go and grab the house and then use the equity from your home and pull that, and now you go on vacation? Exactly. Or how about you use some of the tax benefits that you get from writing off your interest and other items from your home and use that. So you can still do the things that you love to do. It just doesn't have to be instant. The difference is $656 a month between you paying down a landlord's debt. And don't get me wrong. There's nothing wrong with landlords. We love landlords because some people, let's just be, everyone's not a buyer. But at the end of the day, what we want to make sure you understand is what the benefits are to you. So that was awesome. Thank you, Aubrey. Absolutely. Are you ready to go ahead and show the other property? I am. So the next property we're going to show you guys is located in Capel. Now, Capel is a pretty popular area. And um, I didn't realize how popular it was until we started to get all of these showings on this house. And so the one thing I want you all to know about this house, it was heavily updated. This home had some major work to it to get it ready for buyers. And so one of the things that you'll notice, um, first off the bat of the wood floors, we had wood floors placed throughout this whole first floor, except for the master bedroom. And you'll see the new granite countertops, brand new cooktop, brand new double wall oven and microwave that were placed in here. And so this home has so many updates. I mean, it's almost too many. We painted um, all the walls um, in the home to get uh, walls and ceiling. You have your LED light bulb, beautiful bright lights coming in. This wall unit, I want you guys to know this wall unit has been removed. It is totally and completely gone. And so now what you see is this flat wall that you can just imagine how you can visualize entertaining. We had the bathroom redone um, with the freestanding um mechanic I'm not a plumber whatever the thing is you use faucet faucet <laughs> <laughs> and then we updated with the deep soaking tub right here and the stand-up shower and so upstairs you do have the continuation of the wood floors um, and then you have the uh, other bedrooms which are large three bedrooms upstairs and one of the bedrooms does still have the um, hardwood floors and then you have the backyard which is big enough for entertaining and so this house does not disappoint when it comes to updates. So we're looking at four fourteen five hundred. So it is a little bit more high price. Um, and I, I, I get a lot of time people saying, well, why is it so expensive in Capel? Well, if you know anything about this area, this home just happens to be in a pocket where there is no HOA. Uh, but the great thing about it is you have President George Bush Highway on one side. You have 121 on the other side. You have Beltline not too far. This home is located in a major hub for transportation and people working in corporate offices. Um, not to mention the schools are amazing in this area. So you have four bedrooms, two and a half baths, 24, 14 square feet. Um, and we're going to toss it back to Miss Aubrey to get you guys what the numbers are on this property. And again, if you want um, to do a private tour, uh, we can pretty much open the door and let you go in and tour this home on your own. Reach out to me and let me know and I can definitely get that scheduled for you. And so, Miss Aubrey, what do you have for us on your Yeah. Notes? Well, another house, I just love the color. I'm all about the color schemes right up my alley. I also love the fact that house has no HOA dues. I am a no HOA person. I want to put my trash can where I put it and not have someone tell me anything about it. So, definitely a big savings there. Um, what we're looking at as far as numbers, so like, as we mentioned, the house price is a little bit higher. It's got some good benefits there. So your payment's going to be a little bit more expensive. Obviously, every house has different taxes. It depends on has grandma lived in the house for 25 years with a homestead exemption? Did an investor just buy it? What's the price point? So here you've got a first-time home buyer scenario. I ran on this as well. So that's your conventional 3% down, as little down as possible. You can put down as much as you want to. You can buy cash if you want to. Um, but ideally, this is just to show you less out of pocket. So if you put 3% down, you're about $17.50 on principal and interest. 
Your taxes are about $885 a month. Insurance, a little bit higher. It's a little bigger house. Um, so $130 on the insurance. And of course, we do still have some mortgage insurance in there. Total payment conventional with 3% down, you're just under $3,000. Now, another scenario I ran on this was a VA. So we do have access to VA loans. The benefit of a VA loan is zero down. And also, you'll notice no mortgage insurance. So in the end, it's a cheaper payment. It's also less out of pocket. So I will use this home to go through a little bit about what's due at closing and how that works. So we will go through the total out of pocket cost and what to expect. With the down payment, if we did 3% down on the conventional loan, you're about $12,000 for your down payment. You have to add to that closing cost. So closing costs are typical fees that lenders have. Um, we have appraisal all the way down to survey. The good thing is that majority of the time, the seller is going to pay the title policy for you. That saves you almost $1,800 on this home. And most of the time, the seller has a survey, saves you almost another $600. So when you add together your down payment plus your closing cost, that gives you the total due at closing. You're right around $21,500 out of pocket with 3% down. And if you went over to the VA product, which is zero down, look how much less your out-of-pocket is. You're about $9,200 out-of-pocket total for everything. That's for your down payment, for your closing costs, and we set up a little bit for taxes and insurance for escrow. So out the door, really good deal. If you're a veteran, definitely use your benefits. Um, so anywhere from, I'd just say just under $2,900 a month on that house for a payment and just under and around 21,000 conventional or under 10,000 if you're a veteran. I think I lost you, you're muted. I'm gonna there we you. go, there you are. <laughs> Sorry. So you're still under $3,000 a month and you have a home in the central of Capel. And so one of the things that um, we talked about on the last one was how we can save on a monthly payment, but I want to switch mm -hmm. over to how we can come up with, because I know some people will say, well, oh goodness, you know, I, I don't have $17,000 or $21,000 to even put down on a home to even start that investment. So Aubrey, what are some of the conversations that you've had with your clients who have um, purchased homes and um, use various different avenues to get it done? Great question. Great question. So we have a lot of different loan options available. Um, there's certain things that we've looked at, such as down payment assistance. Mm -hmm. The benefit of down payment assistance is the state will come in and give you a grant towards down payment and closing costs. Yeah. I've actually, I closed a client here in April that he double dipped. So he got a grant from the state and the seller gave him a credit towards closing costs. He ended up getting $1,400 back at closing, which was his earnest money deposit. Just Did unbelievable. Did you say that Free was house. April? <laughs> yeah, April 1st. So that was my that first was, closing for April. That was while we were in a shelter in place. He went from being sheltered in a rental to being sheltered in a home investment. That is awesome. That's awesome. And basically got paid to do that. So <laughs> right. that's a really good option. With down payment assistance, you just want to be careful. There is credit score requirements and mm -hmm. income limitations. Mm -hmm. So you just really, if you've got questions about that, let us know. That's one option. Um, another thing is, like we mentioned, seller giving some credit. So if the seller is open to it, you know, they can always contribute a couple thousand towards your down payment and closing costs. The benefit mm -hmm. is whatever credits you get, directly reduces what you're due at closing. So if the seller is giving you, let's say $2,000, mm -hmm. you're now 2,000 less at closing. They just bought your couch and your fridge. So you can thank mm -hmm. them for that. Um, <laughs> so those are just some of the creative ways. Also, do not be afraid of touching your 401k. I did I that. Just gonna ask we that do one. pay, yep. Now I'm like, you'll learn about me. I'm a big saver. I do not like to spend money. I don't like to touch my money. I like retirement. But yes. when you think back to the conversation of how my home earned $100,000 in four years, I pulled out $27,000 from my 401k, put majority of that towards purchasing in the home and the rest towards updating the home. And I put money in my savings account. So I had liquid money if I needed it. Mm. To me, it was worth it because I turned around and within four years, I have now three times what I pulled out of my 401k. I've made that money back in equity. 
So, wow. and then I took, I was able to, with the great rates we have today, I did a cash out refinance on my home that I live in now. Mm -hmm. I pulled out my equity and I bought an investment property with that. Wow. So wait, 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 so wait, my, wait. <laughs> yeah, that is <laughs> awesome. Okay. So you pulled from the 401k for your down payment and some yep. added furniture, purchased the home. And then how many years later was it? Four years. Four years later, you were able to pull that equity to go buy an investment that now you're making money off of the investment. So your investment kept paying you over and over and over again. Wow, guys, I don't know any other investment that is going to continue to pay over and over because when this whole Corona thing started, the stock market started to take a tumble. Gas started yeah. to drop. Real estate, we, we didn't see the biggest changes we saw was not personally going into the properties. And Correct. to hear that a buyer was able to buy a home in April and pretty practically get paid to do it, it really has to, we really have to step back and say, hmm, what is my excuse? Is that vacation that important to me that I can't save this money to be able to afford to get in a home? And there are tons of homes out there under $300,000. And really quick, I just wanted to share some numbers with you. In Collin County alone, over the past seven days, so from last week to this week, over the past seven days in Collin County, there were 328 homes that went live. That's wow. seven days. 123 went pending. That means that that's 123 people ready to go to closing. And then 216 homes sold in the past seven days. In Denton County, 336 homes went active, 121 homes went pending, and 226 homes sold. And in Dallas County, 502 homes went active in seven days. That means 500 homes hit the market in seven days. 118 of those went pending, pending meaning they're, they're on track and ready to close. And 326 homes sold in Dallas County in seven days. So that means, here's what that means. That means that there were 216 buyers in Collin County that bought a home. 226 buyers in Denton County that bought a home and 326 buyers in Dallas County that bought a home. So when someone asks me, how's the market? These numbers tell you that buyers are still out there buying. And so Aubrey, absolutely. what are your thoughts on if someone is just curious about the process, what do you recommend they do first? Call a lender. Don't call your realtor. Call us first. <laughs> and I think that's the big misconception is, you know, first you start shopping for homes. Don't do that. First, you want to know what do you qualify for? What is yeah. your credit score? Is mm -hmm. Credit Karma showing you a 620 and I'm going to pull a 580? You need to know that. So mm -hmm. I think the most important thing in all of this is to not be afraid. It's a very important to get evaluated. The process to get pre-approved and get evaluated is super simple. You can complete a mobile application from your cell phone. It's shorter than an apartment application, which is mm -hmm. phenomenal. And at that point, we have you send in pay stubs. I talk through your goals with you. We don't want to put you in a home and force you to eat ramen noodles and have you <laughs> call us in six months house for like, hey, it's all your fault. No, we're not going to do that. So once we pull credit, credit's good for 120 days. That is four months. Uh, the goal with that is we look at numbers and see where you are. If you're not quite ready yet, what we're going to do is we're going to set you on a game plan. So with the game plan, we're going to determine exactly how much you need to have saved. Where do you want to live? What is that price point going to cost you? That way, if you don't have that savings yet, we start talking about how can we manage your finances to help you save more money, get you educated. We show you numbers just like you saw on the screen earlier today. And that way, at that point, you know where you stand. You feel really good about the numbers. We want you really educated where when you're out there shopping for a house, you're not worried about, can I afford it? What's the payment? Do I have the money? Mm -hmm. We want you to be focused on finding your dream home, not what the numbers are. I want you so educated. I could hire you as my assistant <laughs> by the time you're out there house shopping. That's so awesome. definitely with the coronavirus, do not be afraid to get evaluated, know where you stand and do some virtual tours, get educated. Rates are the lowest I've seen in forever. Take advantage of it. There's great programs out there. Buyers are still buying, sellers are still selling. Mm -hmm. So just keep on keeping on, start looking. So Aubrey, what if we have someone who says, well, you know, this all sounds great, but 
I really don't want my credit ran because I'm working on improving my credit. And if you run my credit, it's just going to drop my scores. So when we pull credit, you lose maybe three to five points max. It's not huge. What I do is I first have the conversation with what is on your credit? What are you working through? Is it medical collections? We don't care about it. Don't pay it. Leave it alone. Ooh. I'd rather you focus on saving than dealing with the medical collection. So really diving into what is on their credit, what's pulling the scores down. If I know that someone is not in an approvable credit score range, then I advise them to talk to one of our credit specialists. And I always warn, be very careful of credit repair companies. You want to work with someone who you have a verified, trusted relationship with. Mm -hmm. So we have great local people that we work with. They will do a free soft pool, which will not hurt your credit, give free advice. And if they can coach you how to do it on your own, they will. Or if you need to call in the big dogs, we've got help for that. And it's, I've had clients in one month, they're ready to go. I have an identity theft victim with 177 accounts within three Ooh. months. He was ready to buy a house. Wow. So if this is not a two year or a one year process with credit help with the right company, you mm -hmm. can easily be ready in three to four months. And so with that being said, I, I've talked to people before who says, well, I'm going to work on my credit before I call the lender. And I'm always telling them, call the lender first before you start working on your credit. Why is that important to not just go and pay everything off? Like, oh, I've paid off my cars. I've paid off all my credit card. I have zero debt. Why is that important to talk to you before they do that? I think most importantly is we're not taught about credit. So the things that we hear and the things that we read online are very misleading and can be very damaging. I've had clients go and pay their credit cards off and it dropped them 20 or 40 points. Wow. So I think it's important to talk to a lender because number one, we can have that conversation before pulling credit. What's on there? What are you doing? What do you owe? If you have credit card debt, I'm going to advise you to move that over to a personal loan because number one, when you move it over, it frees up that line of credit on the credit card. Your credit mm -hmm. scores are going to skyrocket because of it. Don't close the cards. Keep the cards open. And then from there, when you do a loan like that, a personal loan, you're paying more towards principal than interest. Otherwise, with credit card debt, you're just paying interest every month. Mm. So when you go and you pay a car off, think about credit like a tree. So the more types of credit, the more branches you have on your tree. So you've got this big, beautiful tree. Well, you go pay your car off, go chop down a branch and see how your tree looks. It may not look so good anymore. Mm -hmm. So you want to be careful with the actions you're taking to make sure they're not detrimental. And that's where a conversation alone can lead you down a better path. And it doesn't have to equate to a credit pool. Awesome. Awesome. So if someone says, well, I'm going to do this in about six months to a year, when is the right time that they should come and talk to you? I say the sooner the better. If I can have you six to 12 months before buying, we're not car salesmen. We're not going to push you to buy when you're not ready. I want to be able to help you. I want to guide you and help you manipulate your situation to be in the best possible position when you are ready to buy. So the sooner the better. And we do free consultations. It's not a waste of my time. I'd rather hold you and nurture you for a year mm -hmm. than fix what you did in six months. Yeah, so. yeah. And that's awesome because most times when people go to apartments, they have to pay these application fees. And if you want to, you know, I, I recently had someone who wanted to lease a house and the landlord said, oh yeah, we'll, we'll lease it, but you have to have 620 credit score and make three times the monthly rent. Well, they were looking at wow. a $2,000 a month rent. Well, that's $6,000 a month. Guys, that's owning a home because keep yeah. in mind, you have to put down first uh, month and security deposit. So that's $4,000 right there. And that money, can, you can be investing in yourself. Not to mention, if, you, if your credit score does not meet the landlord's requirement, they may ask you for a double deposit. And in some cases, I've seen where people were asked to put down $6,000 on a rental. And so it's things like that that we just wanna make sure you're educated about. And why not become a homeowner build the equity in that home and then use that house to help you buy an investment property. I think that's pure genius. And so yeah. Aubrey yeah. and I are excited to do this with you guys. Um, if you want to do a private tour in one of these homes, talk to Aubrey, see where you stand in the financing world. Again, you don't have to buy a $300,000 house. Those homes that I just gave you the statistics on, they ranged everywhere from between $80,000 for condos and townhomes 
all the way up to $7 million. <laughs> In case you're curious yeah. and you want to buy a $7 million house, Aubrey can still help you with that too. So <laughs> absolutely. let us know what we can do to help. We are here for it. Um, my mission is to inspire, empower, and change lives. And to help you, I have my shirt. This is from Wayne Salzman. Be your own hero <laughs> because oh, I love at that. the end of the day, you know, it's, it's you can either be the, the world's greatest tenant and continue to pay down your landlord's debt, pay for his vacations, put his kids to school, or you yeah. can be your own hero. So, Aubrey, did you have anything exactly. else? Exactly. That's really it. Just don't be afraid to reach out. Don't feel like you're wasting time and don't be the person that feels like you will never be able to buy a home. I've heard that too many times and I have mm -hmm. saved people from those same situations too many times to talk about. So I think everybody should own a home. Um, I, you know, I'm a perfect example of that. I waited 11 years being in the business to buy. And had I done that sooner, I would have bought a house on the M Street in Lower Greenville for 200,000. <laughs> and you bet I'd have some college kids in there right now. So even if it's not a personal home that you want, if you're interested in investment, yes. think about it this way. You can go buy a four unit duplex own one unit for yourself that you occupy and have the three tenants around you, not only paying your mortgage payment, but probably paying your other bills too every month. And that's something we can help you with. So it's all about strategy and just having the right people in your corner and we will get you there. I promise that. I love it. If I didn't have three kids and a dog, I'd take the four unit option <laughs> and have Maybe someone you pay me. Share, <laughs> share the unit. I know. One, dogs in another. Yeah. Right yeah. <laughs> That That's would be funny. funny. Awesome. Awesome. Well, guys, thank you so much for joining us today. This has been phenomenal. Um, I'd love to do this every week and bring you a new property and just talk through how you guys can get into it. And so um, let us know what you think. And we'll be back next week with another home to show you how that mortgage would look. And maybe we'll bring in one in the twos just to give them a little. Yeah, a little awesome. Awesome, awesome. Exactly. Well, thank you guys. Thank you, Aubrey, for your time. You're Very welcome. much appreciated. And if you need Thanks. anything, my name is Shalina. You can reach me at Shalina, S H E L Y N A, at kw.com. And I'd be more than happy to assist. Thank you guys. Thank you. Have a good day. Thank you for having me. I appreciate yes, it. Yes, ma'am. My pleasure. <laughs> bye bye. All right. See you soon. Bye. Yes, ma'am.